welcome to Sunday morning. Did anyone get any sleep last night? I did not, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, we'll have some good news to announce on the board from the board later. Uh, this talk is titled Two Sides of the Same Coin or Open Source Matters. So, first off, uh, who am I? I'm an evangelist for Bold Greta in Motion Hosting. I am also the treasurer of Open Source Matters, i.e. the Joomla project. I'm the sponsor manager for the Joomla World Conference, and I am also a husband, video game lover, former Disney cast member, and an owner of a wonderful dog. Her name is Bellana. In case you get that reference, congratulations. Yeah. You two are a geek. <laughs> um, and I love open source. I call myself an open source evangelist, as you can see from my logo. And I am very active in two open source communities, the Joomla community, obviously, and the WordPress community. And this is usually when stuff gets thrown at me. But if we stop for a second, we're a lot more alike than we are apart. But we also have the same threat. And we're going to talk about this a little bit. And these are similar things to what Duke just talked about and what Alexander talked about in their keynotes. So first things first, everyone take a picture of this number and tweet it up. Take out your phones, take a picture of this slide, and tweet it out. How do you know that they have to do that? Or Facebook it out. How did I install Twitter yesterday? Oh, there you go. <laughs> this will be a memorable tweet, I promise. Just text? What? Text? Oh, only the picture. Just the picture. You can put whatever text you want. You can say, I'm at Jab. This guy asked me to, MP Mike asked me to take a picture of this a number. Whatever you want to say. This is stupid. Here's a photo. Um, what do you want to say? Everyone do it? Yes? Yeah, just do it. <laughs> what is this? Uh, hashtag JW, no, jab, JB17. No, it's too late. It's fine. It's out there. Good. It doesn't have to have a hashtag. It's only if you want to use the hashtag. Give everyone else a few minutes. <laughs> your your, your thing feels good. Cool. Who's still working? Yep. Hold on. Done. You're good. In the back, you guys good? Done? Okay. Cool. So, does anyone know what this number is? No idea. So, just so you know, this number is illegal. Even possessing this number or having a copy of it, you can go to prison. I'm not making this up. This number is the DRM crack code for DVD copyright. Just possessing a number in itself can land you in jail. And what's interesting about that is the fact that how can a number be illegal? How can a, just a number that you're going to get to eventually if you start counting? be illegal and it goes against what we think of as an open source you know so how do we do that for those of you who are worried I did change the number so you guys are not going to go to jail um, but open source matters and freedom of information and freedom of communication does matter and that's why my talk is called two sides of the same coin or open source matters so a little bit talk about my open source journey so, kind of like the Crystal Pepsi Trail. There's a lot of really stupid animations in this talk, so just fair warning with that. Um, I started in with PHP Nuke. Those of you who remember PHP Nuke, it was very much like this. And I was there for a while, making some sites, kind of sick of it. So then I went to Fantastico. Anyone here remember Fantastico and CPanel? Yeah. And I just started installing CMSs, 
till I hit upon Mambo. Fell in love with it. Um, started making client sites. <laughs> started making client sites. I, I, I fell in love with it. And then I, I wasn't really involved in the community. I was just a user. Then I noticed, you know, I noticed support was kind of lacking. And then I went back to Fantastico, kept installing CMSs. I didn't know about the connection. And then I eventually ran upon Joomla. And it was like, oh, this is a lot like Mambo. I had no idea it was a fork, didn't know any of that history. So I like to say that I've been using Joomla since the Mambo days, but I had no idea that the transition even happened until about eight months into it just by chance when I was looking for something else. And I hit across Joomla and the rest is history. As we all know, Joomla we all know and love. It's a great CMS, some good features coming out, and it's great. But I neglected one part of the open source community a lot. And I was a stereotypical person who would say thing, you know, things against it. And that was WordPress. WordPress is the last CMS that I've been involved with. And I'm still involved with Joomla. I still build Joomla sites. I'm still on the community. I'm still on the board. I'm still paying all your expense requests. Um, except for Roberts, of course. Uh, uh, but WordPress did something that has never been done before at the scale. It democratized publishing, and that's their mission. To this day, that is the mission of WordPress, is to democratize publishing. You know, Joomla has a different mission, as we've touched, as Robert touched on yesterday. But what it did is it opened up the internet to so many people that never had a chance to have a voice before. And having a voice is powerful. And tools are tools. I honestly don't give a shit what you use. If you want to use Joomla, great. It's an amazing tool. If you want to use WordPress, awesome. It is also has some amazing features and has a great user base. It has amazing community support. I recommend no more than one, go to more than one community, even if you're never going to build a WordPress site in your life. And I say the same thing in the WordPress events because they know that I'm the Joomla treasure. And I speak about weekly at them um, with because my day job. Um, I say, hey, go to a Joomla event, go to a JavaScript event, go to a PHP event. There's going to be stuff you can get out of it, business sessions, marketing sessions. I mean, I'm sure that if there's WordPress people sitting in service sessions, they could get something out of it just from some of the ideas of the content marketing. Sure, some of the plugins might not match exactly, things like that, but that's okay. Because you're going to make relationships and they might get, you might get introduced to a tool you had no idea. And I guarantee you, your Joomla development will be better by going into another community with an open mind. Brian Tiemann's a great example of this online. He started going to other Drupal and JavaScript things, and he's posting about what he's getting out of it. Because at the end of the day, open source matters. And we're all fighting the same fight. As Duke said this morning, you know, we're, the WordPress army isn't fighting with the Joomla army. We have the CMS Garden. The whole point of the CMS Garden is to support all open source CMSs because open source is the feature. And CMS Garden is one of the most amazing things I think our project can be a part of. They go to events such as World Hosting Days Global and they're side by side with WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, Scientific CMS, and a bunch of others I can't even name. And they just talk to hosting companies and end users and say, hey, you have an enterprise, consider open source you might not want to use closed source. And that is good for the community because the biggest risk to our future is Wix, Weebly, and Squarespace, the SaaS solutions. That is what is reducing market share for all open source CMSs across the board. And that's not good for our clients because it's not, they don't own anything. And what I think is best about Joomla is its community. Now, admittedly, it's a community that's hard to break into. Um, I attended Joomla events for about two years before I was allowed to join a team. And I applied for about six. <clears throat> Never got a reply back for any one of them. You know, that was before the days of the volunteer portal. It's a volunteer organization. Stuff gets lost. I get it. It's not easy. But imagine if you're a new contributor and you're trying to get involved. Imagine still if you get involved 
and you see the dark side of Juma. And that's what I want to focus on my talk today is how we can stop fighting the battles within and start focusing on each other because the community has a dark side. <laughs> um, Pat Sajak said, it seems there is something about anonymity which brings out the worst in us. If you doubt that, come to me into the often weird world of internet chat rooms and message boards. Is anyone here familiar with what just happened in the Drupal community? So there was a major contributor in the Drupal community. He was a major volunteer for DrupalCon, really high up, um, been involved almost since the beginning. He was outed for being a part of some alternative lifestyle. And the Drupal Foundation, the board, basically said, your values don't meet our values, you have to resign. And I have a problem with that, and a lot of the Drupal community did too. Because it wasn't values related to open source. It was personal values. You know how many people in our community have a different race, religion, creed, lifestyle, that we might have philosophical differences with? Your religion might not think it's okay to have same-sex marriage. That's okay. It, we can still work together and not be a dick to each other. All we have to do is just think about this and live by the rule, don't be a dick. You don't have to agree with everyone in the community. God knows I don't, especially Robert, again. Um, but we have a problem and it's not just our community. And I'm gonna give some real world examples. These comments are real. They're censored but not edited using CSS. I was super proud of that, by the way. Um, titles are added for emphasis. Um, some of these are from Andrew Norcross from LoopCon 2017. He did this talk focused on the WordPress community. I'm giving talks, examples from WordPress, Drupal, and Joomla, although I won't identify which ones. Has anyone here know someone in our community who is no longer, you don't have to name names, who is no longer in our community because of harassment, stress, name calling, things like that? We pretty much all do, right? And how sad is that, that we're losing our best asset, our people, due to shitty little things that don't even matter. That's the end of the day, is that it doesn't matter. We're just talking online. And I have a firm belief, and I'm gonna to get to some examples later on how we can deal with this, that I don't believe people are generally trying to hurt people. I don't. But there is something about anonymity on the internet that changes people. So let's get right into it. This is a keynote at one of the conferences, at one of the Juma events. The only reason you got invited to this conference and keynoting is because you're a blank, nothing to do with skill. I originally didn't have these censored for Juma Day Houston. I have since censored them on the request of Juma Day Florida. And quite honestly, um, it's, it's recorded, this is video recorded, and I don't really want to say what the, a lot of these words are, to be frank. Everything I'm posting here is public. And not a single one went to the Code of Conduct team. A friend of my enemy, the titles again are emphasis, um, by blank. I don't like you because you're friends with that blank I don't like. But, not to be sexist, but the mods at blank appear to be mostly women. Like, what does that have to do with anything? Mm -hmm. It doesn't. But again, it has something to do with the internet. Self-worth. Blank people aren't real. Why would you attack someone for something that, of who they are? You know what? Even if it is a lifestyle, in your opinion, like GLBTQ, just don't be a dick. There's people in this community I'm good friends with that post things on Facebook that I fundamentally disagree with. And it makes me so angry that I see those things online. But you know what? So it's their beliefs. I'm not going to harp on them and piss on them for their beliefs. And they're not attacking specific people. They're just saying, you know what? I am really pro-choice. I just, I really am. That's okay. 
We're entitled to our opinions. We just don't need to be a dick to each other. First time student. This is our first time student at a JWC. And this was posted publicly. I see you talking to all those guys at a conference. I'm assuming you're a blank. You're blanking them. I was wondering if you'd blank me in my hotel room. And again, none of this stuff gets reported. The majority of the code of conduct of violations never even make it to the code of conduct team for one simple reason. People don't think it's worth it. They think it's not bad enough. But we have a culture of allowing, waiting until it gets this far before we raise our hand and say, you know what? That's maybe too much. But, you know, we should all just be respectful. How many times have you ever seen in Glip, hey, it's getting too heated in here, we should step away for a minute. Let's take a breather or let's not tie it to personal attacks, things like that. Because again, I think the keyboard has us add things. And I'll talk about some solutions that we can maybe do in, in a little bit. You missed a spot. This was against a translation. There's a tweet. Hey Jumla, very bad translation in the blank language. Translation Google and it's better at Joomla, blah, 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 answer. It was just really, I had to censor most of it. Basically, um, and also this person expressed gratitude. So here's the gist. There was a country, only had one translation volunteer. They wrote a translation. The community in that country all rallied against him about how crappy the translation was. And how dare Joomla thank them in the credits for that release. Dozens of people in that community were making fun of him, posting him, posting memes and pics, defacing him. You know what? Not one person said, hey, maybe you should go and make it better. It was all hitting up against the volunteer. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be a part of this community anymore if that happened to me. Would you? We have a problem. And we need to figure out what we can do to fix it. So what can we do? How can I help? First of all, I believe technology can help us. I believe technology can play a big part in this. First off, Google released the Perspective API. Is anyone familiar with the Google Perspective API? Basically, Google asked the question, what if technology could help improve conversations online? Not censor conversations, but give people that breather and say, I'm sure you want to post that. This is how it works. When you're typing in live, it gives you a toxicity score. So if you say you're a fucking idiot, only care about yourself, it's going to sit. Um, you do nothing to help Joomla. It's going to give you a score at the top. 99% similar comments people said were toxic. And you can also report it if you think it seems off. But it gives you maybe that second thought to think about it and say, maybe I want to rephrase it. Now, admittedly, this is an extreme example, but it gives you that second thought. It doesn't go to a moderator. I'm sure you could use the API for that. But the point of it is to say, hey, stop. May we reward this. Like Alexander said, I'm not sorry for what I said. I'm sorry for how I said it. That's all we're saying. Don't be a dick. And this API is being used on major publications all over the world. And I, even though I'm not on the team, think we should have this in our forums, our GitHub. Although I don't know technically how to make that all work. I am sure we have people that could because they made Joomla. So. Also, code of, code of conduct. I feel most people, does it, first of all, does anyone know how to even report a code of conduct violation? Okay, two or three people in the room, maybe one person thinks he can figure it out. First of all, this is how you do it. You go to about Joomla, you scroll all the way over to code of conduct, where you can read said code of conduct. And it shows how to read the code of conduct and from there. And then it'll allow you to, that shows you how to get to the code of conduct. 
Um, also, there is a contact form linked on there, I believe, as well. At least it was last time I checked. Um, first of all, we have the code of context. Most people have no idea what's in it. For example, one of the things in there <coughs> is step down considerately. Or yes, considerately. Considerately. Basically, don't drop the mic. Just don't leave. If you're, especially if you're a leader of a team. And how many times has that happened? And these are th these are this is the thing that we all agree to by being part of this community. You know, if you see something, maybe let the team know. And there's an option on the form that says FYI, no action needed. And the, the code of conduct, in my opinion, the purpose isn't to be a police. It's to, it's to stop it before it gets too far. Say, hey, pause. Maybe next time, just think about it a little bit because you really hurt their feelings. I mean, last year there was about a two week period. I cried every night, and I'm legitimate. I mean. A lot. I was about to quit Juma. I know because I called and yelled at Sarah most of the time. Not at her, but about the situation. Um, and we all have situations like that. We all get heated. And a lot of times it's just miscommunication. I mean, there's people on this project that I have miscommunications with that we, like, quite frankly, Rowan and I, last fall I couldn't stand her. And <laughs> We're friends now. I thought she was the worst thing in this project. And it was only because of the way we were interacting. And we never actually stopped and said, hey, what the hell? And we did have that conversation. And now it's a lot better, especially after we have more in-person things. But that's the thing, right? Is the internet changes how we talk. You lose tact. You lose context. And quite frankly, it's just, it's just easy to be really short with people. And I'm from Minnesota, home with a passive-aggressive message. So that doesn't help things either. <laughs> So, and sometimes I don't even know I'm doing it. Like la yesterday, we were waiting for the board meeting and Luca's like, I'm here. And I was like, yes, you are Luca. Congratulations, you get a cookie. Well, someone in the board thought I was, you know, making fun of Luca. When really, if I want to be honest, I was like, where the hell is the rest of the board? I was trying to make a hint at everybody else, but different people read it different ways. Which is why something like the Perspective API could Give us that second to think about it, because we're not perfect, and we know we never will be. But be considerate. Really be considerate. And it's something that's really hard to do. But I see so many awful comments by people that I love to hang out with at conferences. It just doesn't make sense. And there has to be a reason why, and I don't believe it's deliberate. Be respectful. It's pretty easy. Golden rule. Treat people like you like to be treated. Be collaborative. And if you have a tank, this is form of the code of conduct. So uh, <laughs> help people, work with teams, find solutions. Step down. Considerately. If you're on a team, have a transition plan. Um, and it affects everybody. Now obviously if there's extenuating circumstances like a medical family issue or anything like that, obviously communicate that with your department coordinator. But so many people just get frustrated. Partly because of a lot of things, some of it has to do with the way they're treated. They just say, I'm done. And they don't even, they have no interest in a transition. So we can't, it's hard to force people, expect people to step down with a transition if they're being attacked left and right. I get it every day. The treasurer is the most hated position in Juma, I feel like, that's my opinion. Um, mainly because it has this perception when you deal with money that you make the decisions about the money. I don't. The board does. I decide if what you submitted supports the board's p position, and I do my best to make it quick, but it's, it's hard. It's people's livelihood, and I get it. Money is a touchy subject. But that's why the board work this, is working really hard right now to have a budget that will actually work with everybody. But please, step down nicely and be available. What I don't mean by be available is be available 24-7 and expect uh, and, and have everyone expect to meet you at every waking moment, no matter what time of day it is. Rowan. Um, we also have time differences in different time zones. And yeah, you know. I, I, quite frankly, it just kind of naturally happened. <laughs> uh, uh, but be available, seriously. And also, I think be available has to do with um, letting people know when you're not available. 
Um, some people on our board have got into the habit, hey, I'm on holiday. I won't be online. You have my cell if it's a true emergency, like, oh my god, all the money got stolen. Um, <laughs> but, you know, be available. But also know that time zone differences are there. And, you know, but try to get back to people, even if it's just, I don't have time for that right now, I'll get back to you next week. Be honest. Honesty is the best thing. But it doesn't mean be disrespectful. And follow the rules. We have rules in Juma. We have coding rules. We have code of conduct rules. We have code of conduct at events rules. Which I believe, Rowan, aren't the event code of conducts usually stronger than the online one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you're in person, so sure. there are kind of more elements to it. Sure. Because people, yeah. Um, also, in be an advocate. Stand up for that person who never had a chance. You know how many first time contributors I've seen online have posted uh, that participated in a bug squash? And they maybe didn't do something correctly. They didn't document it correctly or didn't follow the bug tracker correctly. You know how many times I've seen that during a pizza bugs and fun uh, or a similar bug squash event? Um, and then somebody on Glip or whatever just shits all over that. You know? Instead of saying, oh, hey, you know what? Great. Thank you so much. Welcome. Good, good job on this. Just so you know, we do it this way. Here's a documentation example so you to know it next time. You know, I've seen things like, well, if I have to comment and fix all your crap, why should it even be here? That's not good for our community. Because Joom has a beating heart. Yeah, you've seen this plenty of times. I know, you know it. But it's the community. And as a community, we need to give back. You can give back a couple of ways. First of all, volunteer. If you haven't, is everyone here part of a team? <laughs> or the board is a team. <laughs> uh, you can go to the volunteer portal. You know, get on the website. There's so many things you can be a part of. Find one. I would recommend start starting with one. And just give it your all. Be very honest. Someone asked me to be involved on a, a small WordPress team. And they said, how many hours can you give a week? And I was like, three. And they said, uh, oh, that's way too much. Let's start with one. It's just such a different mindset. Now, granted, they have much more resources, frankly. But, you know, don't go, you know, try to start slow. Because it's very easy. The Joomla community is very, it's a toxic drug. You want to do more and be more involved and be helpful. Because honestly, it feels good. People say good job, you see your work on there, you see your name in, on the release. It, it does feel good. But if you're new to it, I would rather have you start slow. And I think most people on the board would agree and be with us for three years instead of burnout in three months. And if you have no idea what to go, find any board member, any honestly, anyone on any team and say, hey, I'm good at writing or I'm good at bookkeeping or bookkeeping, or bookkeeping, um, <laughs> um, or marketing, or whatever, and what, what, what would you recommend? And introduce them to that person, because even though there's a contact form here, sometimes it can get lost, and a personal introduction is fine. I did the same thing with one of the developers at my company. He wanted to volunteer for Joomla. Instead of just sending him to the website, I gave him an introduction to Michael Babker, so that he could point him to the right production team to be a part of, because I don't know. And he did. Because open source matters. At the end of the day, that's all that really has anything to do with anything. And it's all the same in every community. We all have the same struggles. So let's stop shitting on the other open source projects. They all have great things going for them. And we, they all have things we can learn from. And they have things they can learn from us. Because Wix, Weebly, and Squarespace is the risk to all of us and it's coming down fast. If you don't think it's an issue, think again. Every CMS is losing market share to proprietary solutions because people like that drag and drop. It's become such a problem that Microsoft <laughs> is the largest contributor to the Linux Foundation. And they used to be the pinnacle of 
you know, proprietary software. And they still are, but they have a lot of open source work that they do a lot of good work too, such as donating space for open source events like ours. And really, my, my whole point here is just don't be a dick. Reach out, be a friend, be an advocate. And the most important piece of advice I can give you is you don't have to respond. You can walk away from Glip, walk away from Twitter. Nobody needs to know your opinion on every little issue in the community because that more often than not breeds more attacks, more hatred, and more junk. If you have a valid opinion and you would like to share it, share it. But once it starts getting into that heated territory, the best example I can think of is a couple years ago when um, a certain sponsor wanted to have an advertisement inside the install from web. Regardless of what you think about the, about the implementation or how it was done, that went the wrong direction. People said things that were personally attacking people for who they are, what their religion is, what their gender is, what their race is, what their creed is. And that's never okay. We can disagree, but we can still share the dream of love because open source matters. Thanks.